Hi everyone, my name is Marinko Spasovic and in this video I will show you the proper way of implementing an audit trail in ASP.NET Core Web API. An audit trail refers to the record of all activities that the users perform in an application. We use it to identify who accessed the application, what changes were made, etc. An audit trail typically includes the information about the author of the change, the date and time of the change, the type of the change, and the changed data. We can store audit trail data in database, files, storage services, etc. The most common way is to store this kind of data in the application database, and we are going to learn how to do that in this video. As usual, if you like the video, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons. It helps the channel a lot and supports my work as well. That said, let's move on with the video. Now, I have already prepared some parts of this application, mainly regarding the authentication. I need an authenticated user because we will use their email as part of the audit trail logs and as I said, we have to know who made the changes. Here, you can see a simply auth controller where I accept the user's credentials and check them against the in-memory user's database. So nothing special here, but this will get us a JSON web token and then once the user is authorized, I will be able to extract the needed claim. Now, let's move on with the audit trail implementation. So, inside the models folder, I will create a new class named product. This will be the entity we will create and update in the database. Here, I need an int id property. Also, I need a public string name property. Let's add the public decimal price as well. And finally, the public int quantity. I think this would be enough for our example. Additionally, I need one more model for the audit logs. And let's name it audit log. Let's simply add here all the required properties just to speed things up a bit. After all, there is nothing special going on here. These are all the properties I want to log as part of the audit logging process. Now you see why I need the authenticated user to populate the user email property. At this point, I would like to let you know about our ultimate ASP.NET Core Web API book that you can use to master all the best practices to create powerful production ready web APIs. Also, check out our Blazor course to create client C sharp apps without using JavaScript. The links are in the description below. Ok, let's continue. Before I dive into the audit trail implementation, I need to generate my database and require tablers for products and audit logs. Well, to do that, let's modify the already prepared DB context class. Here, I need a new public DB set product property named products. And also another DB set audit log property named audit logs. With this done, and of course the connection string already prepared and db context registered as a service inside the program class, I can create a new migration using the add migration initial db creation command. After the migration file is created, let's simply update the database. Great. This will create a new database with our two required tables next to the EF migrations table. Now, let's implement the audit trail logic. It is possible to configure the entity framework course change tracking to automatically capture all changes made as data inside the table. This is a very convenient way to track and log the changes users make. So, let's go that way. I will make all the changes inside the DB context class. First, I will need somehow to extract the user's email claim. And for that, I will use a new private read only field of the IHTP context accessor type and name it context accessor. Of course, I will inject it here with the constructor. This will help me get the user's claims in a bit. After that, Let's override the save changes async method with the cancellation token and 
add the functionality to capture the changes to the audit log table. So, the first thing I will do here is to create a new modified entities variable and use the change tracker dot entries method to get a list of all entities that have been added by checking the state property against the entity state dot added value. I will do the same here, but for the modified state. And finally, the same for the deleted state. The change tracker keeps track of all changes made to the entities in our context. Now, I will use a for each loop to iterate over each modified entity. And for each of those, create a new audit log with a new audit log class and populate the required properties. So, let's populate the entity name by using the modified entity dot entity property and then calling the get type method and the name property. This will get me the name of the current member. Then I need to populate the user's email. And for that, I will use my accessor field and call the HTTP context dot user property and then use the find first value method to return the claim for the name. In my case, I have assigned a user's email to that claim. Then for the action, I will just use the modify entity and call the state property converted to string. The timestamp will be populated with today's date. And finally, for the changes, I will call the get changes private method that I'm about to create and pass the modified entity as an argument. Lastly, I will use the audit logs property and call the add method to add a new log to db set property. At this point, I can generate this private method. Here, I will create a changes variable as a new string builder. Then I will again use the for each loop to get each property from this modified entity, but the properties from the original values. The original values are the property values as they were when the entity was retrieved from the database. So before the change. Now for the each property, I can extract the original value using the modify entity dot original values property and adding the property as a key here. I can do the same for the current value. Just this time I will use the current values property. Once I have both values, I can compare them. And if they are different, I will append a new line in my string builder. Finally, I will return the changes as a string. Okay, this is done. And since I use the HTTP context accessor service here, I need to register it inside the program class. All I need to do is to call the add HTTP context accessor method. Now I can visit my already generated controller. Here you can see three actions, one to fetch a single product and the other two to create and update the product. So this is a simple entity framework course logic that the framework generates by default when scaffolding a controller with the EF core implemented. As you can see, there are no specific audit log actions here, just pure EF core logic for saving and updating the entity. Now let's run the app. And first I will send a user login request. As you can see, I got my token. So let's copy it and paste it inside the post request. The body of the request is already prepared. So let's send it. And as you can see, I have a new entity returned as a result. But now, if I check my audit log table, I can find the required data populated except the changes part because I just created a new entity in the database. Now let's test a put request. And here again, 
I need to use the same token. And now I can send the request. I got a 204 response. And now if I check my database, I see the changes column populated as well. So this works awesome. Now, I hope you understand how to properly apply the audit logs in your web API application and have all the necessary information about changes in your apps with the user's info that made the changes. That said, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and the bell button to receive notifications of my future videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best.